guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. So, this is actually going to be my second time filming this video because the first time my air conditioner was on in my car and it was so frigging loud that you could hardly hear me. So, <clears throat> air conditioner's off, we're ready to go. So, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite bands and that's God Lives Underwater. God Lives Underwater was a industrial, like a light industrial. When I say light, I mean in terms of they were industrial, but the music wasn't super heavy. It was more of a mellow kind of thing. It was an industrial band from Perkiomenville, Pennsylvania. And um, I had got into them because a buddy of mine from Ultima Online named Dwayne. What's up, Dwayne? His name was Jodiah Kane on Ultima Online when I was about, I'm going to say 16, maybe 17. And um, we were I was in this cave fighting these monsters and... I run into this guy and we buddy up and we start killing things together and we start talking. This is very, you know, loose recollection now. It's been a long time. And uh, we, we hit it off well and we're talking about music and stuff and he joins my guild and we become friends and we start, you know, talking outside of the game and whatever. And uh, I come to find he was in a band at that point called Love in the Asylum. He had sent me one of his band's CDs. It was cool stuff. And with the CD, he had sent me a God Lives Underwater CD. He said, check this out. You might like it. And it was freaking awesome. Um, it, it's just, there's, there's really, I guess the, the band you would say that's most similar to it would be something like Skinny Puppy or maybe like a light Nine Inch Nails in a way. But it's just like a light industrial sound. So I got to... Um, kind of follow them, and I started looking up all the CDs and stuff, and buying all the CDs, there was only a few, but I bought the CDs and a couple of the EPs and stuff, and uh, the band was um, comprised of four guys, I believe, um, the two that come to the top of my head are Jeff Terzo, who still produces music and does a lot in the music industry, in terms of behind the scenes work, and David Riley, who sadly passed away, um... How many years ago has it been now? Geez, it's got to be like seven years ago now, eight years ago, easy, maybe more, um, from a tooth infection because he he had been, um, you know, uh, there's really no nice way for me to say it, I guess. He had been a drug addict for a while, and, um, you know, after a while, I guess his body had low immunity. He got a tooth infection while he was clean, and he was doing really well, but got this tooth infection, and... Sadly, it took his life because I guess his body was just not up to, up to par and it got worse than it should have gotten. So, David Riley and I used to chat online. I, I looked these people up or I looked up David Riley and I, for some reason his AOL Instant Messenger name was just pretty well known in the God Lives Underwater community. And um, it was uh, it was cool because I used to like talk to this guy and I loved his music. You know, he's one of my favorite musicians. I'm loving the band. And I'm able to talk with him. He had signed some things for me and, you know, sold me some of his, like, um, solo projects that he was working on and signed them and stuff. So I still have those. They mean a lot to me. And then out of nowhere, boom, I find out that he passes away a few years ago um, or however long ago. Oh, and to, to go backwards a moment, when I was really into the band and they were really prevalent, they had done this webcast with Milky Way. And uh, I guess Milky Way was sponsoring them, or Mars was sponsoring them. And it was like one of the first webcasts that I had ever heard about with a band doing like a live concert through a stream. And this is back in the day when I think dial-up was prevalent. I don't think I had like a uh, cable modem or anything then, or there was no fiber optic that I know of. So this was so awesome to me that there was going to be like an online, you know, um, electronic sounding band on an electronic machine, you know, like, that you can watch. So, for weeks and weeks, I'm, like, amped up, and I'm waiting for this, this this webcast to go on, and I'm so excited, and I go to the mall. This is the same mall that I mentioned in my stories, and I see posters for it, and I'm like, holy crap, it's just gotten so big that there's posters for this. Keep in mind, God Lives Underwater was always uh, sort of big, like, they sort of made it, po like, popular in a way, but they weren't like humongous, um, you know, they were in like the Mortal Kombat soundtrack, they were on um, a video game soundtrack called Slamscape, and they were in the Johnny Mnemonic movie soundtrack, so they did make it, but they were never like this humongous band, so I was so excited to see this, because 
It just was the newest, coolest thing to me. And I get home and I'm all amped up and it's the night of the, the webcast and I load Real Player. And if anyone remembers Real Player, I think it's still around, but it just sucks now. Or it's always kind of sucked. It was always like slow and like crappy. And with dial up, that didn't help. And I turn it on and it just starts locking up and freezing. And I guess there was just too many people trying to watch it or perhaps just Real Player not being optimized at this time. I don't know. So it was like such a letdown, and um, it, you know, you, you want to watch this thing, and you're so amped up, and you're like a teenager, and trying to, you know, watch one of your favorite bands. It just, it just completely fell flat. And uh, I've since made a lot of friends who also li listen to God Lives Underwater. And uh, my buddy Bill Radovich and I, we became really close friends, and through the internet about Sega CD games and. Um, God lives underwater, and a new buddy of mine, Rich, I'm going to pronounce your last name wrong, Rich, because I don't remember it off the top of my head, Rich Forneska, or might be Forneska, I, I apologize, I can't recall right now, but he runs a really awesome uh, heavy metal website and uh, writes books about it and stuff, so I'm hoping to uh, link up with him one day on YouTube, but anyway, um, you know, this band that I thought was really small, or at least sort of clandestine and, and unique, which they are unique, or were unique, had, you know, reached out to all these other people that I've now become good friends with, and it's just, it's so awesome that they've, you know, brought me together with other people that I've become friends with. Um, so, now to skip back ahead really briefly, I was friends, or acquaintances at least, with David Riley on AIM, I used to talk to him and stuff, and when I found out he passed away, it, it sort of, I don't know, it, it, I don't want to say it, like, it, it drew me for a loop a little bit because I knew he was doing well, and I hadn't spoken to him in a few years. Um, AOL Instant Messenger kind of died out. I got older. I started working full time, and you know you get busy and you lose track of people and stuff. Um, but I did keep tabs on you know the music and what he was up to. And I always and this may sound sort of silly. I always felt like I didn't have a sense of closure. Like I was friendly with this guy. You know maybe I was just like everyone else and he didn't remember me. But to me it was something that I was talking to one of my favorite musicians. And I, I just felt like I didn't have this sense of closure and it bothered me that he passed away and for years I hadn't spoken to him and, you know, it, it just kind of sucked. And I got older and I guess you, you kind of reflect back and go, wow, I wish I did this or I wish I kept in touch or I wish I went to a live concert when they were still around or whatever the case may be. So I'm in Pennsylvania visiting my buddy Angelo in Erie, Pennsylvania. I've spoken about Angelo before. And I see this book for like a dollar or two on um, the Kindle app. And I have my tablet with a Kindle app on it. And it's called Dreams Are Unfinished Thoughts by, by Brian Paone. Paone. He probably pronounced it Paone. But I think the Italian pronunciation is Paone because of the way of the E at the end. So anyhow... I read this book, I'm completely submerged in this book, he's telling all these stories about him, how he became good friends with David Riley from God Lives Underwater, how he tried to help him with his addiction, he tried to book, you know, he was booking him shows, and they became close friends, he became close friends with the family and stuff, with his sister and his family members, and after reading this book and, you know, taking it all in, it totally gave me the sense of closure that I didn't have, because it felt like... I understood more of David's backstory. I got to sort of, um, I don't want to say live through Brian, but like sort of have this connection through Brian and his stories that made me feel like, okay, I get it now. And think, you know, it was very sad what happened. Things do happen um, like that, obviously, people pass him away. But it was great to have all these other experiences. And uh, I thought the book was awesome. I reached out to Brian. We become friends on Facebook and we keep in touch a little bit. He's still really into the scene. He just found recently a God Lives Underwater uh, VHS tape with this concert that was, I think, one of their last concerts or maybe one of David's last solo concerts. I can't recall which. Um, that he is going to convert digitally and put online. So he's still really got that passion and he's putting, you know, the God Lives Underwater stuff that he finds online for people and he shared some of their music with me that I didn't have. So he's like a, a great cornerstone to the community if you're into the band. But... These are, these are just some great nostalgic memories I have of all my friends, Dwayne, you know, Brian, Bill, Rich now, and this band just meant so much to me. I, I still listen to them. They're still always on my flash drive in my car, and I think you guys should totally check them out if you haven't. 
Let me know in the comments section what you think. I apologize about the light going in and out. I'm going under overpasses. But let me know in the comments section what you think. If you're into like industrial music or maybe like a light metal, I think you'll most likely enjoy it. My favorite album is Empty, but there's an EP that's self-titled that's really good. And then there's more mellow stuff on Life in the So-Called Space Age. And then Up Off the Floor is, again, sort of on the mellow side, but that actually had a, um, a cover of the David Bowie song Fame in the movie 15 Minutes. So that, you know, they, they were still, you know, relevant. It wasn't like they fell off the charts. Just certain points of their career, they seemed to be more, a little more popular than other times. But they were just great, man. There's nothing, there's really nothing that I can think that sounds like God Lives Underwater. Um, so yeah, check them out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, or maybe you're already a fan and you want to just tell me your experiences. Thanks guys for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.